Hey, what's up guys? Brad here. So today I sold my entire stake in Graph Tech. Okay. Tuesday, May 26th, I am out of Graph Tech. Uh, over the last nine months, I put about $20,000 into Graph Tech. Today, after selling everything, I have $12,000. I have a 40% loss on Graph Tech. So in this video, I want to talk about why I sold and you know what, what I'm seeing uh, that really compelled me uh, to sell. First of all, I sold because my whole plan, my plan all along was to sell when Monish Pabrai sold, when it was publicly disclosed through 13F filings that he got out of this position. Now, it's a lot harder to know when to sell a position than to know when to buy, okay? Uh, the whole idea with buying is you wanna wait until you have a great opportunity when it hits you over the head as a screaming buy, okay? Now, when I bought Graph Tech, it, it had a lot going for it. There was a lot of upside potential as compared to downside potential. The contracts that they had already locked in over the next three to five years the free cash flow from those was going to equal the market cap in three to five years, in five years. So, you know, the, the downside was very limited. Now, of course, when you have a black swan event that comes along, uh, comes along like this pandemic, right? Nobody could have predicted this. And now you really have a, a jeopardized situation in graph tech where you know, businesses are gonna start defaulting on these contracts because they're declaring bankruptcy. And you don't have those guaranteed, guaranteed cash flows coming in that you thought you did, which is really what compelled me to make this investment. So, you know, when circumstances change, you've gotta be willing to change your mind. And clearly, Pabrai changed his mind on this investment. You know, I, I held it a little longer. You know, I found out, I think it was the 14th of May that he had sold out. And here it is, you know, almost two weeks later and I just got out. You know, I got lucky. It went, it went up a little bit uh, since I found out nearly two weeks ago. I got out at $7 per share, okay? Now, with this black swan event, with the pandemic, um, a lot of people are seeing a dislocation between what's happening in the stock market and what's happening in the economy. And I'm gonna talk more about that in a future video uh, with Sam Zell. I watched an interview with him and he had some really interesting thoughts about why that dislocation is happening. But, you know, the idea of the Fed kind of propping up the markets for an extended period of time you know, I, I, it, seems, it seems like they'll be able to do something like that for two, three, maybe four months. You know, this $7 trillion infusion of assistance and liquidity, you know, it, it may last two or three months. It may prop things up for two or three months. But when we've got a situation here where, you know, it's, it seems like we're not gonna have a vaccine. I mean, it's gonna be a year and a half, two years potentially before we have a vaccine. Uh, businesses that are gonna be reopening, especially businesses where there's uh, a density of people. You're not talking about bars, restaurants, you know, sporting arenas. They're, they may open at 20% capacity, right? And then maybe go to 30% and then 40%. I was, I was uh, listening to someone talking about airlines. If an airline can't sell the middle seat, okay, say you've got three seats on each side and they can't put someone in the middle seat because they need people to be further apart than that to be considered safe, most airline companies cannot stay in business if they give up the middle seat, okay? So if it, you know, if it's taking two to four years to get back to business as usual, which some of the experts that I've been following think is going to be the case, um, a lot of businesses 
are, are going to need continuous assistance from the government in order to stay in business, right? And so it's just, it's really hard to see a situation where, you know, we don't get quite a downturn in the near future. That's, that's kind of what I'm seeing. Um, so the best situation you can be in uh, if, if there's a downturn coming is to have cash, okay? To have cash ready to buy cheap assets when the fire sale happens. So, you know, especially these cyclical businesses, businesses that aren't long-term compounders, uh, Fiat Chrysler, you know, I got out of that position. Graph Tech, you know, not, not really a, a strong long-term buy and hold business. It was more of a, you know, buy it for cheap uh, and then get out and maybe a double or triple kind of situation. But, you know, those businesses I think are really going to get hit. Those uh, kind of buy for 50 cents, sell for a dollar type opportunities. Um, you know, if the recovery takes uh, on the order of years, which, you know, there's not really a precedent for, uh, for what we're going through right now to, to have any kind of clarity about how long it's going to take. Um, I've been meaning actually to dig back into, you know, what went on with, I think it was 1917, the, the great uh, flu pandemic back then, you know, what was it like as businesses kind of got back up and running? How long did that take? How, you know, how slow was it? What was the spread like of, of that particular flu virus? Um, I'm sure there's a lot of lessons to be learned from, from looking at the history there. But really, you know, I made the Graph Tech bet knowing I was gonna sell when Pabrai sold. Obviously he has sold out, so you know, I'm out. I'm out of Graph Tech, um, and I'm, I'm waiting. I'm not seeing a lot that's compelling right now. Micron, you know, around forty-five dollars. It's it's somewhat attractive, I think, at forty-five dollars. I'd really like it to drop down to forty dollars or even less than that. But I mean, right now, it's it's really a waiting game. I want. Um, I want to wait until the markets uh, kind of sync with what's happening in the economy, which I think inevitably there will have to be some reconciliation there. Um, but I'm not in a hurry, guys. I'm, I'm building up cash right now, and I'm just, just waiting until the deals come to me. So that's where I'm at right now. In terms of lessons from GraphTech, you know, in an earlier earlier video, I mentioned, well, maybe I shouldn't have gone so heavy into graph tech. You know, in one of my uh, investment portfolios, it was like a 50% bet. Half of my portfolio was in graph tech. That really hurts when you have half in one company and you lose 40% on, on that investment. Um, but honestly, you know, that, that was my son's portfolio. He's one and a half years old. So incredibly long runway. Uh, someone chimed in in the comments said, well, you know, when you have a risk reward profile like Graph Tech, you know, it, it probably makes sense to bet big, even if, you know, one out of 10 or one out of 20 times, you know, you're going to lose money. This is a black swan event. This is a kind of a once in a lifetime event that's happening right now with with the pandemic. So they were, they were right in, in kind of reassuring me, I shouldn't beat myself up over this particular uh, investment. Um, yeah, other lessons, you know, I don't, I don't know that I have other lessons from this one. You know, I think I just have to kind of lick my wounds. And um, well, one lesson is to really focus on, on finding these long-term compounders versus you know, buying something because it's cheap. With, with Graph Tech, I really bought it because it was cheap. Um, and you know, the price to earnings ratio, I think it's below three right now. You know, that's an indication that it's cheap. Um, so hopefully, you know, Pabrai, he's talked about how he's getting better. He's not just finding the cheap 
uh, investments anymore. He's looking for the hidden compounders. So as he gets better, you know, as my mentor, hopefully I'll get better at, at identifying the compounders. And um, so that's that's one thing that that's kind of uh, knocking around in my brain is this idea of moving away from purely the the cheap plays and really studying the compounders and, and how to identify those uh, even when, when others might not see that they're compounders. So you know, that's going to be a lifelong kind of learning exercise. But that's all I got, guys. I am out of Graph Tech. Just wanted to let everyone know some of you had you know asked me to keep you posted on when I sell. So I am out. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.